studied about the basics of electrodynamics. That's, those are the electrostatics, magnetostatics, electric fields in matter, and magnetic fields in matter. Do you remember what you studied there? Okay, uh, Coulomb's law, Gauss's law, and its applications, special techniques, and also the magnetic fields and its basic equations, Biot's law, Ampere's law, its differential forms, and the magnetic fields in matter. Okay. Then you studied different terms such as electric displacement, magnetic susceptibility, etc. Okay. Okay. Then I am um, going to represent the electrostatics and magnetostatics using these two basic equations. As you all know, from static electric field, it is a conservative field. So we can represent that it was E is equal to zero. In such a case, that electric field can be represented as negative gradient of a scalar. That scalar is known as electric scalar potential. Okay. Then, from the magnetostatics, that would be is equal to zero. It is a significant law. No magnetic monopoles exist. From this, we can write B is equal to del cross A, where A is the magnetic vector potential. Electric scalar potential B and magnetic vector potential A. Okay, and we all studied these topics. Basic equations we have studied during the electrostatics and magnetostatic studies are the Coulomb's law, which has the relation connecting the charges and the force. And the Gauss's law in electrostatics, that is the surface integral E dot ds is equal to Q enclosed by epsilon 0 or del dot E is equal to rho by epsilon 0. That's the differential form of Gauss's law. And the Biot's law, B is equal to mu 0 by 4 pi integral I cross R B L by R square, which gives the relation between the current and the magnet. And also the ampere cell total law, which is similar to the Gauss's law in electrostatics. That is integral B dot DL is equal to mu0 by A closed. Or in the differential form is that B is equal to mu0 J. And the basic applications which we need to apply during the theory, that is the Stokes theorem, integral A dot DL is equal to surface integral L cross A dot D. And the Gauss's divergence theorem. That is the volume integral del dot A d tau is equal to surface integral del cross A dot D. Okay. Next topic is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. You all heard about the topic in your previous classes. What is the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction? Can you explain? Okay, I will share. When a steady current is passing through a stationary loop. The magnetic field in that coil changes, which again implies to change the magnetic flux in that coil. This change in the magnetic flux induces an electric field in that coil. That is the theory of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. That is, when the magnetic flux linked with the stationary loop closed loop changes and induced EMF is produced in that loop which is in opposite to the direction of change in magnetic flux. That is the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. And in physical concept, the induced EMF E can be represented as minus d phi by dt which is the negative rate of change of magnetic flux phi. Okay. Then, what is the EMF? EMF or electromotive force is the work done by the active electric field to move once along the closed loop. A unit positive charge to move once along the closed loop. Okay. Then EMF also can be written as minus line integral of E dot dn which is the closed integral. From these two equations, E is equal to minus E phi by dt and E is equal to minus closed integral E dot dt. We can write the equation 3 
that is closed integral below g n is equal to minus b phi by d. Okay. Then also in the basic class we already studied about the magnetic flux. In such a closed surface, if d s is a surface element, if this is the direction of b and direction of d s, phi can be represented as surface integral below d s. Hope you remember. Substitute this equation number four in this equation three. That is, closed integral e of t l can be written as minus g by d t of surface integral e of t s. Okay, you got it. Then, if the closed part is a stationary part, we can change this integral into partial integral and can take an inside the integral. That is, R J is minus surface integral dot p by dot t dot t. Then this equation, line integral e dot t l is equal to minus integral dot p by dot t of t s is known as the integral form of Faraday's law. Okay. Now we can derive the differential form of Faraday's law. Then apply Stokes theorem to LHS of this equation. Then surface integral that goes e dot d s. That is the line integral e dot d s has been converted into surface integral that goes e dot d s, which is already equal to minus of integral dou b by dou t dou t s. From this equation, both integrals are surface integral on RHS and LHS. So from this we can write that cross E is equal to minus dou B by dou T. That is the differential form of Faraday's law. Which makes the difference you have already studied in the electrostatics as that cross E is equal to zero. That is possible only in the case of static electric field. So, in case of acting electric field, then cross E is equal to minus dou B by dou T, and also we can derive that dou T is equal to zero. Then cross E B is equal to minus mu zero J, and Delta E is equal to rho by epsilon zero. Delta E is equal to rho by epsilon zero, which gives the Gauss's law. Delta cross E is equal to minus dou B by dou T, which gives the Faraday's law of induction. Delta B is equal to zero, which gives the um, magnetic monopole does not exist. And delta cross B is equal to mu zero J, which is the Ampere circuit. These are the four basic laws that we have when we go to electrodynamics. Okay. Now we can study the importance and physical significance of induced electric.